How's it going you guys? In this video I'm going to go over my current herb and supplement stack. Um, I did make a much longer video where I actually showed you all the different brands and the packages of these supplements and herbs that I'm taking. But that video ended up being like 50 minutes long and it was um, just a lot of me talking without really getting much information across. So I want to make a really quick video before I had to do jujitsu practice where I just kind of like outline my current um, routine, supplements and herbs and whatnot, and kind of explain the reasoning why I'm doing uh, each kind of supplement without you know spending too much time blabbering on. Um, so this uh, supplement stack, the main intention is basically to optimize dopamine and to improve my overall energy, my vitality, my well-being, my motivation, and my zest for life, while also improving sleep and not hindering sleep. So um, I'm going to start with um, the most, I guess, novel parts of my recent uh, stack. And before I go into my caffeine, uh, consumption because that's what really takes the most time to talk about because it's so controversial which is kind of weird. Uh, so basically the basic um, foundation of my routine on top of my new caffeine kind of approach is uh, I'm consuming a lot of Makuna purins and dopamine precursors. So before harder workouts or harder training sessions I will take L-tyrosine, anywhere from 700 to 1,400 milligrams on an empty stomach before training. And this works best in the morning when you're fasted uh, because other amino acids from protein consumption can interfere with the absorption. But then again, protein absorption is happening for, you know, anywhere from 12 to 24 hours after you consumed your last meal. So that's kind of like a weird thing I should look more into and make another video about. But nonetheless, uh, everyone who's watching this probably already knows I have plenty of videos already about this and all the other supplements I'm about to talk about. Um, L-tyrosine is a direct precursor to um, dopamine, neuroadrenaline, and adrenaline, or norepinephrine and epinephrine. And its main uh, benefits is it increases your motivation, your energy, and it uh, helps your body, your mind stay sharp. It helps your body deal with stress under stressful situations. There's been um, studies done on military uh, soldiers where they go into a warlike situation after taking various uh, doses of L-tyrosine and they find a significant improvement in their performance when they take tyrosine before going into combat and as somebody who is constantly battling heavy weights, heavy conditioning circuits and jujitsu training, basically jujitsu training is like the closest thing to, to combat that you can get without actually being in combat besides like Muay Thai sparring so or MMA sparring or an actual fight. But anyway, so L-tyrosine very beneficial and Keep in mind, anything that optimizes dopamine is also going to um, so it's going to lower prolactin, or it's going to improve your hormonal profile to a certain degree. So what that means is um, the the more the the better your dopamine production is, and the more sensitized your dopamine receptors, and the less down regulation you have, and the less desensitization of dopamine receptors. Um, most likely the more pro-anabolic or androgenic or uh, beneficial male compounds we could say even though all the hormones even estrogen and cortisol are beneficial but the more androgenic signaling you're going to get basically so that you could think of it as better testosterone profile just to put it very simply um, so yeah but you don't want to take it to a high degree and start mega dosing ashwagandha and crap like some of these people like Christopher Walker will say. Uh, that's not beneficial, not a good idea. Um, and we're not looking for, like what I'm not looking for boosting testosterone or optimizing testosterone. 
because I realize that comes from a truly healthy diet and lifestyle um, and removing factors that suppress testosterone production and optimizing things like uh, sex hormone binding globulin those are the main factors involved in like healthy testosterone on a blood test and a lot of people talk too much about optimizing testosterone without ever getting a blood test so they're kind of just shooting um, bullets into the wind like with like they're not really they're wasting a lot of time and energy uh, with mental masturbation and fantasizing about the idea of testosterone rather than actually having blood tests and knowing what they're working with for me though my main goal is it has nothing to do with testosterone it has everything to do with feeling great and basically feeling all the factors that are typically associated with testosterone because with herbs and supplements a lot of the scientific data is only suggestive of certain effects but it's not entirely like if you take x you will get y you know if you take macuna you will get a boost in testosterone it doesn't work that way unfortunately although there's some studies that's Close enough, but nonetheless, I'm looking for feeling great, feeling amazing, improving my vitality, my well-being, etc. So, anyway, uh, so the L-tyrosine is the beginning of that stack, um, and I typically will mostly take it before my hardest training sessions. And I try not to take it every day, but it works so well that it is something I enjoy taking as often as possible without potentiating a tolerance. Uh, so on top of that, I have this Capacachu powder, okay? So uh, a lot of people won't recognize Capacachu right away, but a lot of people probably have taken this before and not realized it because this is actually the Ayurvedic name for Makuna Purins. So Makuna is another, um, it's like a whole herb or a whole food um, type of extract that, in, that provides your body with the building blocks of dopamine. And so I like taking Makuna as a regular dopamine optimizing herb. Uh, I take the Now Foods Makuna Purins uh, extract, standardized 15% uh, L-DOPA. Um, and I take about uh, two capsules of that, and that comes out to about 120 milligrams of uh, L-DOPA inside of the extract. And I take that the Makuna extract from Now Foods before bed, two capsules, because I notice the particular extract makes me tired. And a lot of people talk about Makuna making them tired as like a negative effect. But I believe that maybe it's a good thing, and especially for people who struggle with sleep. So I, I look down in Parkinson's disease forums and people taking Levodopa or, or taking Makuna in order to remedy their problem. A lot of them say that it really helps them sleep. So I've been taking the Now Foods two capsules of L-Dopa, or sorry, Makuna Dopa extract, Makuna Purins before bed every night and I found that it really enhances the deepness of my sleep usually. It makes me feel good, but I have had like two nights the past week that I've been taking that, the past two weeks I've been taking that where my sleep is kind of affected by something else. I think I was really dehydrated and I noticed my sleep is highly sensitive to my level of hydration in that moment. One more thing I forgot to mention is that I, this whole stack that I'm talking about, um, I've been taking it now for about two whole weeks. So, And I, I usually don't take a ton of supplements and herbs, but this year I've been experimenting a lot with dedicated herbal stacks and just trying different things and buying the highest quality stuff to really see what's been affecting me and then documenting my experiments on my channel. That's what my channel has been about for as long as I've been on YouTube is about my experiments my, and sharing my knowledge with you all. Um, so, uh, so I take the Makuna extract by Now Foods Before Bed and then I will take about, I was, I started off with a half a teaspoon of this um, Makuna whole bean powder in the morning with my morning drink or my morning coffee. Typically I don't have coffee these days in the morning. And then my evening drink, um, that could sometimes be 2 p.m., 3 p.m., sometimes 5 p.m., depending on the day and my schedule. I'll take the, I'll blend the Makuna in some hot coffee because I think um, that this, works better when it's blended with some coffee and especially my evening drink I'll add some green 
tea, some matcha green tea powder. Because when you combine matcha green tea with, or, or just a green tea extract, the polyphenols in the green tea, the epicatechin gallate or ECGC, um, helps to enhance the effects of macuna, and in particular it's the ECGC, which supposedly is a dopamine carboxylase inhibitor, which is the enzyme responsible for breaking down dopamine in the circulation. And so if you take precursors of dopamine and combine it with matcha green tea or green tea extract and inhibit dopamine carboxylase, that could leave the dopamine that's produced from these precursors in your body for a longer period, which means that they work better and you need to use less and it can just optimize the effects. And some people say it prevents any negative side effects and prevents withdrawal symptoms and things like that. But um, the big thing here though is I'm not exactly sure if this uh, Macuna powder is properly prepared. I definitely don't think it's an extract. Um, it looks like it's just a, the powdered bean and that can actually be an issue because the powdered bean I believe is used um, for detoxification purposes or basically to make you pee and poop a lot. Uh, whereas when they prepare it a certain way, um, they cook it or boil it or something, it's supposed to um, have the tonic-like effects. Uh, and also it's not standardized, so there's no telling exactly like how much is in it or what type of preparation they use or anything. I can only assume, and it is from a brand that's, high, that's been claimed to be respectable and good. And also it's, this brand is supposedly certified organic and they specialize in Ayurvedic herbs. So I should give them the benefit of the doubt that this is a high quality product. Um, now, uh, this year I've been experimenting more with different brands and cheaper brands, actually this month. Most of the year I've been using Hyperion Herbs extracts um, and Hyperion Herbs does have their own Lacuna extract which says exactly what it is. 10 to 1 concentrated dual extract, standardized to a certain amount of L-DOPA. But um, I want to try this, and so far I'm not really sure um, exactly how to classify it. Um, it's been two weeks and I have felt like it's been helping, but it might actually be the other things that I've been taking that have been helping, and not entirely this Capacachu or Makuna powder. So. Um, let me know in the comments what you all think, if anyone has experience with this. Um, you know, there's a lot of channels on YouTube that talk about using Makuna and combining it with other herbs like ashwagandha and whatnot to lower prolactin and increase testosterone. Christopher Walker talks about, not Christopher Walker, Vitaging Herbs, and I think Christopher Walker talks about that, but I don't really follow Christopher Walker. I think he's a charlatan. <laughs> so let's see, what else? Um, so I'm also really doubling down on the on the black maca. So I have in, uh, used uh, I have bought Hyperion Herbs black maca black maca extract. They're ten to one gelatinized uh, dual extract of black maca, and I believe that that increases circulation and mood and, and optimism and sports performance to a high degree. Uh, and it doesn't have that gritty, aggressive sexual feeling that yellow maca tends to have. Uh, yellow maca can make you feel irritable and aggressive and, and highly horny, like really horny. Um, whereas black maca has like a more calming, grounding effect and a more of a boost in circulation and a regulating effect on the, on the libido. Where I don't really feel the urge to masturbate to porn, but if I have sex with a real woman, then my uh, tool or my baby making stick or whatever you want to call it will light up like a freaking uh, beastly object in time, space, reality. So, <laughs> um, the black maca extract from Hyperion Herbs I really like. Um, however, I've also been buying these giant bags of bulk black maca from Anthony's Organics or Anthony's Herbs or I think. And Anthony's Organics, I think is the brand name, the giant brown bag. Uh, you'll find it on Amazon if you search for it. They have black maca, red maca, and yellow maca. 
and it's only like $15 a pound for black maca, which even for raw black maca is really uh, cheap. Usually it's a lot more expensive than that. Black maca can be very expensive. The only problem with it is that it's raw, so I'm not sure if I'm even digesting it because maca is essentially a potato or a tuber, and makuna is essentially a bean. And so uh, I've noticed I, I haven't really been having the healthy bowel movements that I was before I started taking them. And I think that that's because these are just like, they're not, you know, the maca's not gelatinized. Gelatinization is basically just boiling the maca root like a potato, because you can't just eat potatoes raw. Um, and the, the beans, you know, you don't just eat raw beans either. So um, could be one or the other, or could be both. But I'm wondering if I'm even digesting this stuff, and that would suck to be wasting so much money on. And they're they're really cheap, so I mean, I just don't want to be spending you know ten, fifteen dollars on a big bag of something that's only making me constipated and not really having any benefit. Um, so, but I have been taking a lot more maca. I take one teaspoon of Hyperion Herbs Black Maca extract in the morning before training, and then I'll take the. Um, and then I'll take the and I'll take a teaspoon now of the Makuna raw powder in the morning. Then I take another dose of another teaspoon of Makuna powder with a like two tablespoon dose of the raw black maca uh, in my with my evening drink. Um, and sometimes I'll do the raw black maca in the morning too. But I just I don't know if I'm not digesting it. Probably not good to do that before training. So. Um, Overall, uh, so I think the black maca is great because I believe maca in general seems to uh, increase the sensitization of dopamine and possibly androgen receptors in the brain. So uh, since resensitizing dopamine receptors and resensitizing uh, androgen, androgen receptors can actually make whatever dopamine and testosterone you're producing more effective. So you may not see increases in circulating testosterone levels from taking uh, maca root, uh, while as makuna seems to possibly have increases in circulating hormones. But whatever hormones you do have floating around there may be more effective just by, basically if you think of your testosterone receptors or any receptor site as like a, like a hole that sucks neurotransmitters and hormones in to make them work, okay? Think of that receptor site as sensitizing, just like getting bigger. So it can take in more of the dopamine and more of the hormones. That's going to be my simplified explanation of how I look at receptor sites currently and how this herb can, might work. And it's not exactly how that works. They attach to receptor sites or they bind to receptor sites, but let's just put it that way. It's more of an electrical probably uh, like hooking the red wire into the red outlet and zzz. anyway <laughs> um, so yeah um, and there's a lot of other benefits to maca such as you know increasing possibly increasing DHEA levels and uh, black maca increases circulation and nitric oxide and things like that providing antioxidants it's still or so they say but you all already know my stance on that so beyond all of these things, um, I'm also um, taking about uh, like a like a, um, a basic solar ray um, Tongat Ali, and this is something I just added like three days ago into my stack, and I'm not exactly sure how it's affecting me. I think it's been increasing my feelings of calmness, maybe, but I also feel like it's adding like depression and self doubt, and that is something that Tongat Ali has done for me in the past. But the but I'm taking like a whole herb capsule. I don't think it's an extract, but I've heard from other nootropic experts say that the solar ray whole root tonkata Ali is effective somehow. And it's not the long jack, you know, LJ one hundred extract, the hundred to one or two hundred to one extract that most people say is necessary to get the effects. It's just a plain root powder or whole uh you know, herb powder. So, um, I do feel like it's, it's, it's affecting my mood though, uh, and my calmness and mental clarity. I just don't know 
exactly what it's doing. So that's something I kind of added recently in the last three days, but um, I have noticed kind of less benefits lately since I added that back in, so I might remove it. Um, another thing I, I added in the last like couple days is acetyl carnitine um, along with alpha lipoic acid, and I'm taking maybe 400 milligrams of acetyl carnitine and uh, 200 milligrams of alpha lipoic acid. Um, I'm taking the Spring Valley brand by Walmart because it's third party tested by many uh, te uh, consumer labs and, and lab door to, to claim it like it actually has what it claims it has in it. And I've taken it and I definitely feel the effects that I would expect from a Alcar supplement. And the main mechanism from Alcar supplementation is increasing energy uptake at the level of mitochondria. Um, as well as um, enhancing the acetylcholine system, okay? So in increasing the, um, the functioning of acetyl uh, acetylcholine. Um, and I believe I have a video on, uh, on LCAR, um, but maybe not. Um, but there's plenty of other videos, uh, other YouTubers out there that do. But basically, uh, the main reason why I'm taking it is because it seems to uh, improve my uh, sport, my athletic performance and my energy during periods of hard training and when I'm not consuming a high carb diet. Uh, and I think it helps it helped me keto adapt um, at a certain point when I was transitioning uh, again from a high carb to like a ketogenic type diet. So. I do think it's beneficial, and alpha lipoic acid has a wide variety of benefits, mostly as a uh, free radical scavenger and um, helping the recycling of endogenous antioxidants. So, um, yeah, the only downfall of that is it might make some people feel jittery and stuff, but I haven't really noticed that, actually. I've noticed quite the opposite since I started taking it, but it could be a Tonkat Ali, who knows. So let's see, um, that is the, oh yeah, and then cordyceps. So I have been taking about half a teaspoon of uh, Hypernerves cordyceps for a long time now. And just uh, yesterday, I got the real mushrooms cordyceps extract and I wanted to just try it. It's actually more expensive. It's about $35 for two ounces of real mushrooms cordyceps. And it doesn't list the concentration, so you don't know how potent it's supposed to be. Whereas Hyperion Herbs has four, is four ounces for about $45. So um, technically Hyperion Herbs is uh, cheaper. And the other thing is Hyperion Herbs actually is very transparent. It lists the type of extract and the concentration and potency. So I just want to see what difference I notice taking the real mushrooms cordyceps versus taking the Hyperion Herbs Cordyceps. And admittedly, I did take a whole teaspoon now of the real mushrooms Cordyceps compared to the half a teaspoon I would normally take of Hyperion Herbs. Um, so I'll keep you all updated on that. So the, probably the biggest change I made, and a lot of people would freak out at me if I put this in the beginning of my video, but if you watch this far, I suppose that you have a high enough IQ level to not like crucify me in the comments over this, um, people just have an irrational view of caffeine. But um, but essentially, and, and also, let me also just say, I am not taking Rishi. I think that that kind of low, like increases serotonin and decreases cortisol too much, which kind of does the opposite of what all these other herbs are doing, which is jacking up my catecholamine choline production. Um, I feel more feminine sometimes and more depressive from Rishi, so I'm leaving that out for now. Um, Gynostema, I'm not really taking on a regular basis, but I might have some off and on. Uh, Hoshu Wu uh, might take like half a teaspoon here and there, but again, it's not a huge part of this program right now. Might add both of those back in, Gynostema and Hoshu Wu, uh, relatively soon. Now, caffeine intake, what is my caffeine intake like? So, um, in the morning, I'll take about four, 400 milligrams of isolated caffeine supplement. 
The reason why is because isolated caffeine has been shown in studies um, to significantly improve athletic performance. Um, and in particular, for somebody my size, the, do the clinically active dose is anywhere from um, like 350 milligrams to like uh, 600 milligrams uh, pre-workout. And the range of 400 to 500 milligrams supposedly is the most effective. Now that's a lot of fucking caffeine if you ask me, but I'd say 400 milligrams seems to be um, seems to make sense, especially if we're talking like a super hardcore vigorous um, uh, lifting session in the morning where I'm about to um, hit some head, like maybe max out on power snatches and then hit a super hardcore am uh, AMRAP set on deadlifts, this is as many reps as possible, or hit two AMRAP sets like I'm going to do tomorrow along with, um, you know, like five sets of three power snatch, five sets of three snatch pulls. Then hit uh, work up to like a basically a 12 rep max deadlift is basically what the AMREF is probably going to be or I'm expecting it to be. Followed by like a 15 to 20 rep max deadlift. Followed by a bunch of accessory work after that. Like that's what my workouts are looking at looking like these days. I'm trying to improve my conditioning for jujitsu while in increasing my strength and the higher glycolytic. Um, you know, 30 second to one minute type of uh, rep range. Because uh, it improves the energy system that will improve my Jiu Jitsu while also increasing strength at the same time and muscular endurance. So taking a lot of caffeine before a training session like that can be very beneficial. Um, and as long as it doesn't provide me with negative effects, I don't get negative effects from that. And I've tested things like coffee, tea, or mate, and I get a, I, I can't, I don't know if I want to, like, I guess I kind of get a, la a little bit of a laugh. When I hear people tell me that, oh, I just take your mate before my workout. I've heard people say that, like health food stores and shit, and, or, <laughs> and I just can't help but at, like think to myself, what kind of workout is this person doing? Typically, these people don't look like athletes. They just look like the type of person that goes to a gym, they do like cardio machines and whatever. And they're not really lifting much weight, they're not really, they don't really have any serious goals. Whereas I am trying to push my numbers with certain strength goals, which I've been terrible at actually achieving this year, or my entire career actually. Um, and winning gold medals in Jiu Jitsu, which I'm still pretty behind on that goal. But nonetheless, I have serious goals and I'm training really hard for, and these people probably don't. If I drink aromate before a jiu-jitsu session, not only is that shit going to sit in my stomach, but it seems to lower my blood pressure. I feel just like going to sleep or, or just like meditating. Aromate doesn't pump me up. Green tea doesn't pump me up. And I've experimented with equal amounts of caffeine from these things as well, and it doesn't seem to work the same way. Uh, I recently got guarana extract and there's about 200 milligrams per scoop and I found that even taking 400 milligrams of a guarana extract does not provide me with the same boost that 400 milligrams of caffeine from an isolated caffeine supplement does. So what I'm getting at here is, um, yeah, I've tested all this, I read the research and isolated caffeine seems to be super awesome super beneficial. And that's what I've been doing the last two weeks, basically. Just, uh, I added the ice, well, actually I one week, because um, I've only been doing my new training program for about one week. So that isolated caffeine supplement, and uh, on top of the maca, and I might take like 200 milligrams of extra caffeine in the evening, or my evening drink might just be like some some high quality coffee, whether it's bulletproof coffee beans, which Dave Asprey, I think, got kicked out of the company somehow, uh, but he hasn't really been super public about it, so I don't even know if I could trust bulletproof coffee anymore. Um, or or, caf or uh, coffee with extra caffeine, or just take an isolated caffeine supplement along with coffee, or just isolated caffeine in general. But more caffeine if I'm doing evening training, usually. So. That is pretty much the totality and the main points of my supplement stack. And I can't really think, oh yeah, creatine. I, I've been trying to get about uh, eight grams of creatine in a day from a creatine supplement, micronized creatine. 
because in studies, 0.1 grams per pound uh, uh, per kilogram, 0.1 grams of creatine per kilogram is a clinically active dose associated with, like, pretty much at this point, as close to proven sports performance benefits as we're going to get. So I don't, I don't think it's wise to avoid caffeine supplementation and creatine if you're a serious athlete, because these two supplements are like the closest thing to steroids someone can take without actually taking steroids as far as like the science is concerned. And you know when a supplement has a lot of science backing it up and it has an evidence-based community um, talking about its benefits, that means the shit is beneficial beyond a shadow of a doubt. But if we start talking about tyrosine and macuna and these other things I talked about, Tomcat Ali, most of these uh, so-called evidence-based uh, people will think it's all placebo and blah, 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 even though we know that that shit works too. So just think about that for a bit before you start to say, oh, creatine, you're, you're eating all this meat, or caffeine, just fucking drink green tea, or you freaking drug addict or whatever. It's like, I have like... Like it's not causing me any negative side effects. The minute that it starts to cause me uh, unwanted side effects, I'll stop taking caffeine. That's why I saved it for last because people have stupid comments that don't make any sense. Uh, considering the fact that I've been experimenting on and off with caffeine since 2008, that's a long fucking time. I've gone months without caffeine and I've done different experiments and so I'm at a point where I don't really care about like, oh, finding the natural alternative or anything like that. I just want to do what works for my intention. Like, if it's not working, you know, if I feel like shit taking green tea before a workout, why the fuck am I going to try so hard? It reminds me of when I quit veganism and all these people were trying to tell me, no, you've got to be vegan. It's the healthiest thing ever. And it's like, well, my experience of like a whole year of being vegan actually showed the exact opposite. But you can keep believing Michael Greger and these other uh, people. So anyway, <laughs> anyway, leave a question in the comments down below. Talk to you all next time.